What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer and welcome to lesson number 17 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the built-in math object. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications by clicking the bell so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 17. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the built-in math object. JavaScript's math object contains math properties and methods. And in this lesson, we're going to be covering the most commonly used properties and methods. Now, the first thing to know is unlike the built-in date object, which we looked at in the previous lesson, the math object is not a constructor. In other words, we don't need to create a new math object to start using it. When it comes to properties, we're only going to look at one of them, which we'll look at first, and then we'll learn some of the most commonly used math methods. I will leave a link in the description box below to a full list of properties and methods that are available on the math object. So you can go ahead and check them out as well. Okay, so let's see how this all works. So first of all then, let's take a look at the math property pi. To use the value, we simply say math.pi. So let's go ahead and store this in a variable called pi. So I'm going to say const, because this value will never change, const pi, and we're going to assign this to math with a capital M dot pi. And now for console.log pi, let's save this. The console gives us, well, pi. By default, this returns pi to many decimal places. Now we can actually shorten this by using the number method to fixed. If you recall, we learned about two fixed in our lesson on number methods. Let's display pi to only two decimal places instead. So here we can say pi dot two fixed, and let's say two. Save this, now we get 3.14. Let's now learn about some of the most commonly used math methods. Let's start with min and max. These are basically used to identify the highest and lowest numbers in a list of numbers. So for example, let's just comment this out for now. Down here, we're gonna say let min we assign the value of math.min. Now inside this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna specify a list of numbers. So let's say one, two, three, let's go for 100, 43, seven, and let's go for 5,000. Now if we console.log min, that's what we get. Perfect, so the min method returns the lowest number in this list, which was of course the number one. The max method will return the highest number. So let's say, math.max and we should get 5,000 back. So let's save this. And of course we get the number 5,000. So the max method returns the highest number in a list of numbers. So that's the min and max methods. The next one we're gonna look at is the pow method. Now pow is short for power. So we can say, down here, let's say let pow be assigned the value of math.pow. And then in the parentheses here, we're gonna specify two numbers. So let's just say five and three. Now when we console log pow, what this is gonna do is it's gonna do the sum five to the power of three. So let's save this. And what we get returned is 125. So the pow method finds the power of two numbers. So that's the pow method. Next up is the random method. Now this one's really handy because it's used to actually generate a random number. So here then, let's say let random be assigned the value of math dot random. And let's just go ahead and console log this now as it is and see what we get back. So console.log random. Okay, and this returns to us a random number between zero and one. So we can do this a few times and we get a different number all the time. But let's say that we didn't want this decimal number, but we wanted to get a random number between the numbers say one and 10. Well, we can do that again by making use of the number method to fixed. So here then I'm going to say random dot to fixed. And the first thing we're going to do is one, and then we're going to say multiplied by 10. In fact, before we do that, let me just show you what we get when we just say two fixed one. Let's save this. Okay, so what we're getting then is we're getting one number after the decimal point. Okay, if we said two, we get two numbers, just like we did up here with pi. So let's set this back to one. Okay, and now that we've got one, what we can do to this then is multiply this by 10 in order to get a single number. So now we get three, eight, two, one, and so on. So by saying two fixed one multiplied by 10, we're able to pull out a random number between one and 10. Finally, the last two methods we're gonna look at are used to round numbers. So the first method, which is called floor, rounds down to the nearest integer. So let's say console.log, and then inside here, let's say math.floor, and let's specify a number in here. So let's go for 5.0. Seven. So remember, the floor method rounds down to the nearest integer. So when we save this, 
the console gives us 5, because 5.7, when it's rounded down to the nearest integer, is 5. And finally, the RAM method returns the number rounded to its nearest integer. So let's go ahead and just copy this. And let's change this to round. We we'll use the same number, and now if we save this, the console returns 6 because 5.7 rounded to its nearest integer is 6. If we said 5.4, the console returns 5 because the nearest integer to 5.4 is 5. So guys, that's all about how to use the math object. To summarize, the math object provides several methods for managing, manipulating, and formatting numbers. We can use the min and max methods to identify the smallest and largest numbers in list, and we can do some really cool things such as generating a random number using the random method, as well as using the floor and round methods to round to the nearest integer. So let's go ahead and look at your tasks for this lesson. Okay, so nice and simple then, just two tasks for this lesson. For the first task, I want you to use the correct math function to generate three random numbers between 1 and 10. Store each of these numbers in variables called num1, num2 and num3, and then I want you to console log the variables. And then for task 2, I want you to find the largest of these three numbers by using the relevant math method, and then store that value in a variable called max, and finally console log max to show the largest number. So I'll go ahead and pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for the first task then, we want to create three variables called num1, num2, and num3. So let's say let num1 be assigned the value of math.random. This will return a number from 0 to 1, but what we want is a number from 1 to 10. So we're going to make use of the to fixed method. So dot to fixed. And here we're going to say 1, and then multiply this by 10. So this will give us a random number now between 1 and 10. Okay, so that's the first variable. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this. Change this to num2 and num3. And then we need to console log these variables. So down here, we're going to say console.log num1, comma, num2, comma, num3. Let's save this. Okay, so we get 7, 9, and 3. So of course, what we're looking for is the max method. So here I'm going to say let max be assigned the value of math.max. And because we've stored these in variables, we can just use the variable name. So let's just go ahead and copy these, paste them in. Now, before I press save, what we're not going to get is the same number, 7, 9, and 3, because when we press save, it's going to run these statements again. So let's just go ahead and save. So here you can see we get three different numbers, 4, 10, and 1. Okay, now we get 2, 5, 2. So when we console.log max, we're going to get a new set of three random numbers. And then using max, we're going to pull out the largest of those numbers. So let's go ahead and save. Okay, so we get 6, 5, and 0, and then the largest of those is the number 6. Save again, 7, 9, and 1, largest being 9, 2, 9, 7, largest being 9 again, and so on. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to be learning all about comparison operators. So be sure to tune in, don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.